Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Liam Madison, representing Salada Unique, and I'm here today to speak to you about the operating efficiencies of our current production LEDs. So in the overview of today's session, I'll quickly give an introduction to Salada UV, then the story of what defines efficiency in LEDs and how we can determine these efficiencies, then give some overview results of a case study of Salada operating efficiencies and then a future outlook for how these can be improved. So Solana UV is a privately funded Australian semiconductor company with offices across the world. Um, we have facilities in Taiwan and our principal compound semiconductor epitaxy facility in Brisbane, as well as R&D facilities in Adelaide and Sydney, uh, all in Australia. So LED operating efficiencies. The first of these that I'll go through is the wall point efficiency, which is probably the most familiar to everyone in this room. It's simply the optical output power you get from the device divided by the total input electrical power. The optical power we can measure directly from the measured spectrum, and obviously we know what input power we put into the device. Wall plug efficiency in an LED is the only primary that I'll speak about today that captures the impact of the device operating voltage. Um, due to the trade-off between conductivity and transparency, dry voltages can be quite high in far UVC LEDs, and so that's one of the limiting factors of the wall plug efficiency. The other obvious limiting factor is the dependence on power, um, and power depends on all the other operating efficiencies that define the wall plug efficiency. So we can break wall plug efficiency down further. The first of these that we'll go over is the injection efficiency. The injection efficiency is the ratio of the current that contributes to the recombination in the device, which can be both radiative and non-radiative, to the total current put into the device. And a far UVC LED, this might not be constant with drive current or with operating temperature. And it's not something that we can easily measure or derive. Um, it's typically severely hampered by the availability of holes in a far UVC LED, which produces electron overshoot. We can partially mitigate this, but the strategies that we have available to us begin to run into their limitations based on the material system as we head towards lower and lower wavelengths. The next efficiency is the radiative efficiency. So of those recombinations that I just mentioned, some produce photons and some don't. So in our LED, we typically consider three recombination mechanisms. Only one of those three mechanisms produces photons, the other two just produce heat. So the radiative efficiency is how many photons you get for how many total recombinations. Um, it's typically modeled by what's called the ABC model, uh, which is this equation here, which doesn't matter too much for this talk right now. Um, but it's not something that we can easily derive or measure in the lab in a typical device. You can access it through optical techniques and through low temperature techniques, but it's difficult to do um, on a day-to-day -day basis on LEDs themselves. Next efficiency is the light extraction efficiency. So that one is fairly straightforward. How many photons we produce that escape the device to the total number of photons produced in total the device. It basically tells us how easily light gets out of the structure. This is one of the principal limiting factors in far UVC LEDs, which has been touched on um, several times today. Uh, as the wavelength decreases in the nitride material system, you will typically shift towards inclined emission, which makes this problem even worse. And as I mentioned earlier, with the wall plug efficiency, to keep that efficiency high, you want low dry voltages. To keep the dry voltages low, you need high conductivity. To have high conductivity, unfortunately, you lose transparency. So you also have absorption losses um, in far UVC LEDs. That light emission problem is something that I spoke about at this conference last year, and it's something that our SPSL technology directly addresses. Um, but yeah, the rest of the challenges, particularly relating to absorption, are still present um, in most structures. So the next one that I'll go over, or the next two, are quantum efficiencies, internal and external quantum efficiency. The first internal quantum efficiency is the ratio of photons produced inside or internal to the device for the number of carriers that you put into the device, whereas the external quantum efficiency is the ratio of photons that you measure external to the device for the number of carriers that you put into the device. The EQE can be understood by the total picture of the operation of the device, which is for each injected carrier, how many carriers contribute to recombination. For each recombination, how many photons do you get? And for each photon you get, how many actually get out of the device? So you can break the EQE down into the product of those other three efficiencies. It's nice from a physics perspective because it captures all the key operating parameters of the device, 
It's also very nice from a lab perspective because we can directly derive it from measurements because we can know the number of photons that were produced from the device from our measured spectrum. So knowing these efficiencies, how can we determine them? Because I've just told you we can't derive or measure those things directly. So in a case study here, I have a bunch of guy um, that are from multiple wafers from multiple bins from our production guy. Um, covering a wavelength range of 232 to 240 nanometers. This top plot is the operating power at 20 milliamps, and the bottom plot is the extracted peak wall plug and external quantum efficiencies. Um, what we notice is that there's very, very strong wavelength dependence, even across just this 8 nanometer band. And so we want to better understand what the root cause of that is and what the limiting efficiencies are in that. So we take Two separate approaches to try to understand the efficiencies. The first of these is what I call a normalization plot, described in this reference below from the Jane and colleagues. Um, in this method, we start with the ABC model that I mentioned for radiative efficiency, and we assume a constant injection efficiency and a constant light extraction efficiency. Um, from this, we can do some mathematical manipulations. Take my word for it, but you get this equation. The key feature of this equation is if we perform a change of variables, we get a linear equation if all the assumptions hold, which in this case, throughout the article, we can see in the bottom right, we do get a linear equation. This equation has a single offset term, which is the maximum radiative efficiency. So under the condition that we get a trade line in this change of variables plot, we get a radiative efficiency that we can just read off as the y-intercept. Um, in the top here, we have the EQE curve, which is the blue dots, and the power curve, which is the red dots, and the maximum operating efficiency point, which is this vertical red line, can be used to perform this normalization. The second method of analysis is what we call a fit method, which is developed in Solana. Um, in this method, we start with that same ABC model and the same constant light extraction model, but we allow the injection efficiency to vary with current. And in this case, we assume a exponentially decaying model. Um, from these other efficiencies, we can derive the EQE and power curves. And because we now have a model, we can do, set up an optimization problem on those model parameters to do a curve fit, as we show in this vertical view at the top right. So we have the measured points as dots for the EQE and power, and the fit is the solid lines. From that fit, what we get out is an injection efficiency line and a radiative efficiency current dependence, which we can then read off the maximum efficiency point just based on its maximum value. So taking these two analysis methods and applying them to that data set that I showed you earlier, we have on the top right the radiative efficiency from the two methods. There is a big offset between the two methods, and I'll address the root of that in the next slide. But for now, I'll just point out these have the same trend with labeling. They cover about a 30% range in radiative efficiency. Um, across that 8 nanometer band, and they also have the same trend in what here is the injection efficiency, light extraction efficiency product. Um, I've done it that way for two reasons. One is from the normalization plot, that's all you get. You can't separate out just that product. From the normalization plot, in the ideal scenario, you can separate out injection efficiency and light extraction efficiency, but what I've found is there are strong correlations between those parameters still in this case, um, but that product is what we have. And so to have a direct comparison between the methods and to deal with that fact, um, I'll talk a lot about this product in the rest of these slides. Um, we do see fairly good agreement between the methods for that product, but it's mainly these other two, um, although a gradient of efficiency which disagrees. So why does it disagree? We can understand that the root cause of that disagreement based on the difference in the assumption that's made about the injection efficiency. So in this data set, this is simulated data here on the left, I have a die with a flat injection efficiency and a die with an injection efficiency that's allowed to decay. Both of these have the same radiative efficiency model. What you find is that when the injection efficiency is allowed to decay with operating current, which we expect is the case in a far UVC LED, the maximum radiative efficiency operating point and the maximum external quantum efficiency operating point become decoupled. The result of that is when you apply the normalization plot method to this kind of simulated data, you always end up underestimating the radiative efficiency of the die. So in terms of which set of these lines would you trust, 
I would be inclined to trust the orange ones more, but reality is maybe somewhere in between. So, despite that, both methods do show very similar trends with respect to the radiative efficiency um, and give us insight on what we can kind of drill down on to improve the efficiencies of these devices. Um, the extracted radiative efficiencies are fairly decent at around 50%, um, depending on the wavelength and the dye. Um, but that can obviously be improved further. Um, you know, 80% would be a good number to get to, and we expect that will have a lot of lead-on implications for lifetime as well as its efficiency. Um, and also probably the injection efficiency by improving the material quality in the layer responsible for that. That said though, it stands out the injection efficiency and LEE product is extremely poor across four wavelengths. It's about 2% at kind of the highest end, which means either or both of our injection efficiency and light extraction efficiencies are very poor. So we can address the light extraction efficiency by improving particularly the absorption. We have PBM in our structure and the stoked SPSL, which both absorb quite strongly at 230 to 240 nanometers. And the absorption efficiency can be improved by further optimizing our EBL structure, which is designed to try to get holes into the structure and keep electrons from shooting through the structure. Silver lining, we don't need to do much to get a big improvement because the numbers are so poor. As an example, we have here a case study of a two dye, both from the same wafer, from the same bin. One of these dyes has a polymer lens, one of these dyes does not. The implication of that polymer, polymer lens is an increase in the light extraction efficiency of less than 5%. What that nets us is an increase in the EQE of 0.32 to 0.52%, and an increase in the alpha power of 1.3 milliwatts to 2.2 milliwatts. Um, so what this shows is very minor increase in light extraction efficiency can boost our operating wall plug efficiency, quantum efficiency, and power, um, overall output power. And so we're hopeful and very certain that by addressing the other efficiencies in the devices through those items that I just mentioned, we'll be able to deliver even better wall plugs and operating power in the future. So if you have any questions or want any more information, please come chat with us in the booth. Thank you very much. Thank you.